AP Calculus, AB, Related Rates Problem number 19. And uh, we have a spherical balloon here. Uh, this is my spherical balloon. This is its power, uh, ga its gas source. And we are being told that this balloon of ours is being inflated at a rate of 800 uh, cubic centimeters per minute. And the question we're supposed to answer is, how fast is the radius increasing? At the instant, the radius is A, 30 centimeters, and then the second question, 60 centimeters. They could ask us a hundred of these parts. Once you get this figured out, you can fill any damn number you want. So when you get on the exam and you see more than one question, don't flip out. If you can answer the first one correctly, the second one's free. So it's kind of good they ask us two. So this is kind of how I started working this out. I asked myself, what did we know? What were we given? The first thing I saw was this. Realize that we're given this rate up here, aren't we? And this is a rate. So we're given this rate. And my question to you is, what rate is this? And my argument to you is, this: isn't this the rate that the volume at which the volume is changing over time? So this is dv dt, right? The rate of the change in volume as time goes by and is 800 cubic centimeters per minute, right? The next thing that we would answer, ask ourselves is what's happening? Well, this balloon is being filled, and as it's filled, its radius is changing. But as a balloon is being filled, its volume is changing, and we ask ourselves, well, what is the volume of a sphere? And the volume of a sphere, which I'm gonna call V sub S for now, <coughs> is just 4 thirds pi r cubed. And if you're asking me how you should know that, well, you sh there are certain ones you should memorize, and we'll talk about those as we go. But I guess that takes us to here, doesn't it? So what I'm going to do here is this. I'm going to differentiate this thing. I'm going to take dv dt of this thing. So I'm going to differentiate this, and it would be 4 thirds pi r. Whoa, no, it wouldn't. What are you doing, boy? It would be 12 thirds, right? 12 thirds pi r squared. Are you with me? Uh, hopefully you're with me so far. All I'm doing is differentiating the outside piece using the chain rule, uh, the chain rule, but I have to take the derivative of the inside. So what's the derivative of r? And the derivative of r with respect to t is dr dt, isn't it? dr dt. And if you're confused at all, I'm applying the chain rule to this, right? Because I'm taking the derivative here, dv dt. So as I do that, implicitly, I have to take the derivative of this inside piece right here. So what I've done is uh, the derivative of this inside piece, the derivative of r is, well, the derivative of r. And hopefully, you can read my writing well enough to see that this is an r, OK? I'm going to simplify this out a little bit. And we know that 12 over 3 is 4. So we can say that dv dt is equal to 4 pi r squared dr dt. Now look back for a second at the question. It says, how fast is the radius changing? So we're interested in, in the derivative with regard to the radius, aren't we? So here we have that we're kind of stuck here for a second, but look what else we know. We differentiated the volume equation, but we already have this thing. So we can set this this way, can't we? So just take a look if you don't mind. What I'm going to do now is this. I'm going to set this thing equal to 800 right? Because dv dt is 800. So I'm going to start, I'm going to take this out and saying, I believe that this is 800 and a dv dt is 800. So I'm just going to replace dv dt with, frankly, dv dt. So far, so good, I hope. So if you went from there, we right, what we're interested in is this piece right here, aren't we? So I'm going to divide both sides by this and get 800. I can't believe it. We're almost done. 800 over 4 pi r squared is equal to dr dt. And remember, that's exactly what we want, isn't it? So here's our, here's our derivative that we're going to take, our, our rate of change that we're interested in is right here, isn't it? And then all I'm going to do is take, we're asked a, when the radius equals 30. So I'm just going to take radius equals 30 and plug that in, and I'm going to get 800 over 4 pi 30 squared 
is equal to oh all right is equal to check my math two pi two ninths pi here this is crucial centimeters per minute that's the rate of change isn't it and then if we wanted to figure out what it was this is for 30 but at radius equals 30 here and then th like I said before once you get this thing figured out once you get this thing figured out all you have to do is plug in the next question was at 60 and you just do 800 4 pi times 60 squared equals and then do that math when you get to here this is calculated oh and let me say this god that's great while we're here if, the, if you get to a section on the AP exam, it's, there's no calculator allowed. If you leave it here, you can get credit. You can get credit. However, if you try to do this math on your own and you get the math wrong, all of a sudden your answer's wrong. So think about that. You don't have to go through all these gyrations. Like I did all this crap here. I didn't have to do this. I could have stayed right here. They want to know what calculus you know, not what arithmetic you know. However, so I went here. This is fine. I know that this is correct. I'm going to get a check mark there. I'm going to get my points here, uh, especially once I once I give my my rate here. I'm sorry, my unit of measure here. I would have to put my unit of measure over here. But if this piece of arithmetic is wrong, so is my answer. So I caution you all: be very careful about um, going the extra mile and accidentally costing yourself points. So okay, glad we had this talk. Keep up the good work. Oh, subscribe, will you?